Hello, friends. Welcome to our broadcast, Limitless Life. I am your host, Larry Hutton, and I am so thrilled to get to do this TV program on a daily basis like this because you just get to keep sharing more and more things that pertain to life and godliness so that people can live a good, good life, a wonderful life, a blessed life, a happy life, a joy-filled life, a contented life. I mean, just a, a wonderful life. God wants us to live a wonderful life. And uh, so that's what we're all about on this program. Uh, like I said, say all the time, we're, we're not teaching religion. We're teaching a relationship with a man, Christ Jesus, and a God, Christ Jesus. Well, he's, he's both man and God, and he's our friend. He's our Savior. He's our Lord. He's our healer. He's our deliverer. He's, he's everything to us. And so we're so thankful because uh, he has so much good in store for us. I mean, our... our pathway our future is bright when we learn to live for Jesus and and in fact that's what we're talking about really in the, in the last four programs this is the fifth program now where we uh, decided uh, to start talking about Jesus living through us how to let Jesus and his life live through us and so Je Jesus living through us um, we, our foundation text might as well just turn back there real quick Galatians 2 20 it's the one we've used all week I have been crucified with Christ it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And we also use Colossians 3.3 3 that says, You are dead. Your life is uh, hid with Jesus inside of God. Uh, so we are dead. We're dead folk. We've been talking about dying to self. If you really want Jesus to live through you, then you have to die to self. And we were in Luke 9, 23, so let's go back there. That's kind of where we ended last couple programs. In Luke 9, 23, Jesus said uh, to everyone, uh, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Luke says, take up his cross daily. Both Matthew and Mark don't use the word daily. Just take up your cross and follow me. But Luke says, take it up daily. And I, I believe it is something you need to put your flesh under on a regular basis uh, so if you have to use daily, that's fine. Uh, Jesus said, if any man will come after me, number one, number two, deny himself, number three, take up his cross, and then number four, follow him. So we already talked in detail about denying yourself. Uh, actually, we weren't even finished because we found out denying yourself meant two things. Uh, number one, uh, to abandon self-dependence. So we talked in detail last program about self-dependence. But number two, selfish desires. So let's talk about what does it mean, selfish desires. Well, Ephesians, let's look at Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. Uh, you has he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, and among whom also we had our conversation, our manner of life, in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. So here's what it means, selfish desires. In other words, well, I want to go there, and I want to eat here, and I want to do this. Well, I want to watch this on television. It's always my way or nobody's way. You know, I mean, you're not going to be happy if you can't have your own way. That's selfish desires. Remember, Colossians 3 says, you are dead. So that means you don't want anything. You're dead. You don't want anything except God's desires, right? You're dead. Play possum. <laughs> play possum. I, I know what's going to happen. Those of you that understand what I mean by that phrase, play possum, you're going to come to my, one of my meetings in the near future and you're going to walk up to me and say, hey, Brother Hutton, play possum. And I'm going to love it. I'm going to laugh, but I'm going to know, hey, they got a hold of it because here's how we let Jesus live through us. Praise God. So we're dead. That means we don't want anything except God's desires. Therefore, we prefer others over self, right? Uh, like Romans 12, 10, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another. So we should want God's desires for our lives, not selfish desires. Uh, Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. He'll give you the desires, both the desires that you have and his desires will he'll, he'll put in his heart. So both ways. 
I believe both ways are accurate translation. Uh, so he'll give you your desire. Man, you desire this kind of home or you desire that. I believe God will give you the desires of your heart. But he'll also put his desires in your heart so you'll be desiring his desires. Um, but anyway, uh, let's go on here in Luke chapter 9. If any man come after me, let him deny, deny himself. And so come after me, we've covered, deny himself. And then the third thing he says, three out of four things, uh, take up his cross daily. But take you got to understand what take up his cross means or the word daily doesn't mean anything. So take up his cross. If you look up the word take up, it literally uh, uh, means to lift, lift up. So his cross, but figuratively, it means to raise the voice. So you're going to have a voice to Jesus. Take up. And then his cross is used in the Greek language, is used figuratively to mean self-denial uh, by implication, the atonement of Christ. Uh, another, uh, another word for atonement is compensation. In other words, Jesus prayed the, paid the price to redeem us. That means I'm going to lift up Jesus and raise my voice for him in every area of my life denying myself as the one in control of my life. So that, that's what it's saying here uh, when it says, take up your cross. And so you're going to want to do this on a daily basis. Man, take up. I'm going to lift up. I'm going to raise the voice for Jesus. Uh, I'm going to self-denial just like Jesus did. It's the atonement that Jesus made for me. It's the compensation he paid the price for me. So I'm going to lift up my voice to Jesus and I'm going to do it daily. I'm going to do it hourly. I'm going to do it minutely. <laughs> Every minute, praise God. So that's what it means by taking up your cross. And then it says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, let him take up his cross daily and then follow me. What does it mean to follow Jesus? Well, it means follow what he does, follow what he says, follow his faith, follow his love, follow his forgiveness. That'd be a good one to live the way Jesus lived. If we're letting Jesus live through us, follow his forgiveness, follow his righteous indignation, right? <laughs> Amen. We're supposed to follow him. And that's what Jesus is saying here. 1 John 2, 6. I quoted it every time, but let's, let's look at it this time. 1 John 2, 6. He that says he abides in him, that's you and me that are born again, we abide in Jesus. Uh, he who says that he abides in Jesus, then walk even as he walked. Walk as Jesus walked. How is that? Well, Romans 6, 2 says we're dead to sin. Are you out there living a life that you know is wrong? It's a life of sin. Here you are born again. You're a child of God, but you're living in sin. Romans 6, 2 says we're dead to sin. Romans 6, 4 says we are buried with Jesus. And so we, th therefore we can walk in newness of life. Verse 11 then says, count yourself as dead. You know what that means? Play possum. <laughs> count yourself as dead. Um, 1 Peter 2, 24. It says, Jesus bore our sins when he hung on the tree so that we would be dead to sins. We're supposed to be dead. You are dead. Your life is hid with Christ in God. If you want Jesus' life to live through you, you've got to get a hold of this, my brethren. Let him live through you. You are dead. Your life is hid with Christ in God. Uh, Verse 5, in fact, verse 5, says, in, in Colossians there, it says, mortify. <laughs> mortify things concerning you. You know what the word mortify means? It means to deaden or uh, take authority and dominion, to, to subdue, take authority or dominion over. And then it tells us to subdue and to treat ourselves as dead. Our lives are dead. So... Uh, mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. So verse 5 says uh, five things that we're supposed to uh, subdue, treat as dead in our lives. In other words, we don't let them operate. If we're dead, then there, nothing's happening, right? So look at the five things. He said fornication, 
which if you look up the Greek word fornication, it's harlotry, it's uh, adultery, it's incest. All of those things are part of the word. So I'm not going to allow that in my life. Uncleanness is the next one mentioned, which is impurity, physical impurity, but also moral impurity. So I'm not going to let moral things, impure moral things or physical impurity in my body or in my life. Uh, the next thing that's mentioned is inordinate affection. Inordinate affection, literally, it means an, uh, an excess of lust for something. Uh, whether it's sex or anything else, it doesn't just have to be sex, but an excess of lusting for something. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, that's an inordinate affection. There are people that have inordinate affection for sports. There's an, I've seen people have an inordinate affection for uh, having fat on their body and they lose all the fat, even the healthy fat, and they become skin and bones and, and they become unhealthy. So an inordinate affection, an excessive lust for anything. Uh, the next thing that's mentioned, uh, if we're going to be dead to self, is evil concupiscence. I don't know if I'm saying that right or not. But uh, that means an e a longing for illegal things. So if you're longing, maybe you're longing to get rich and use an illegal means to do it, selling drugs, whatever. You know, um, that's anything you're, where you're longing for something illegal, uh, that's evil concupiscence. And then covetousness, which is in the Greek, it means fraud, it means extortion, it means greed. Uh, and the verse calls it idolatry, meaning the possession of money and things has become your God. Uh, so we, we need to think about these things. This is all part of letting Jesus' life live through us. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon. Why? Because you're dead. Your life is hid with Christ in God. So mortify, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetous, which is idolatry. You know, basically... I kind of think it boils down to this. We need to look at the bigger picture. Instead of just, if we'll get our eyes off of self, what I want, what I need, selfish desires and all that stuff, then we can look at the bigger, bigger picture that, you know, it's not just about my life, it's about others' lives. In fact, now that I said that, turn over to Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. Look at this. This is a good, good passage right here. We want to, we want to talk about the bigger picture, living our lives for Jesus, letting Jesus' life live through us, right? Um, look at Romans chapter 14. Let's start in verse 1 here. I want to I read eight, about eight verses here. Let's start in verse 1. Him that is weak in the faith, you receive, but not to doubtful distance. Butations. In other words, don't get people that are weak in faith and start disputing things with them that causes doubt and brings doubt and unbelief to them. For, now specifically he's talking about certain things, he's talking about eating things and people disputing about that, but it can apply to any area. But in context, let's see what he's talking about. For, one, one of you believe that you may eat all things, Another among you believe, who is weak eats herbs. Let not him that eats all things despise him that eats not all things, and let not him which eats not all things judge him that eats all things, for God has received him. So you can see what he says here. He said, listen, some of you know that you've learned, you're not weak in faith, you've learned that you can eat all things that can be received by God, whether it's meat or vegetable, that you can eat those things and be blessed. But another, and this verse 2 says, another who is weak, verse 1 says in faith, so verse 2, weak in faith, eats, in other words, you think you have to be a vegetarian and that calls you weak in faith. God's not putting you down for that. He's not saying that's terrible that you're weak in faith because you have to think you, think you can't eat meat. Well, big deal. So go ahead and eat your vegetables and be blessed. <laughs> God's not judging you for that. Amen. And so, and it tells you and me that understand that it's okay to eat meat, that we're not going to judge them for it. Who are you, verse 4 says, who are you that judges another man's servant? To his own master he stands or falls. Yes, he shall be held up, for God is able to make him stand. 
So God, it doesn't matter what you and I believe about eating. If one believes a vegetarian, the other thinks I can eat all things. God's able to make both of us stand, all right? So don't judge the other one and put them down. One man, verse 5, it goes on. So it's not just eating he's talking about. That's why I said you can apply this weak in faith uh, and, and don't start disputing, get people in doubt and accusing people, dispu- disputing and stuff. Because he said uh, one man, in verse 5, esteems one day above another. So see, first of all, he was talking about vegetables versus eating meat. And then now he's saying, now some of you esteem, well, this day. This Sunday is more important than this day or whatever. You're esteeming days uh, over another. Another esteems every day alike. So you realize, man, Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. Every day is the Sabbath to me, bless God. I serve him every day. I don't just set aside one day to serve him. And then it says, but let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. So in other words, don't judge the guy that wants to go to church on Saturday and Saturday is the day he esteems highly. Don't judge him for that. Man, if he's seeking Jesus, who cares? Amen. We got to grow up, don't we? Um, Verse 6 says, listen, he that regards the day regards it to the Lord and he that regards not the day To the Lord, he does not regard it. So one day is more important to another. So big deal. He that eats, eats to the Lord. Look at this sixth verse. He that eats, eats to the Lord, for he gives God thanks. And he that eats not to the Lord, eats not and gives God thanks. So you're a vegetarian. You're giving God thanks for your food, aren't you? You're You're a meat eater. You're giving God thanks for your food. Guess what? The Bible said the word sanctifies the the food that we're eating. And he sanctifies it through his word and by our prayer. Our prayer releases his word. So it's sanctified. For, let's go on in verse 7. For none of us live to ourselves and none die to ourselves. Do you remember the verse we looked at already where it says, uh, it is not within man to know himself which way he's going to go or even to establish his own ways. He doesn't, he doesn't understand what true life is all about, what, what, is, very, what is even his call and, and everything he's supposed to do and, and, and carry out in life. He doesn't, it's not in man. It's in God. So it's in God, in Jesus, we have to live and move and have our being. Are you understanding this? And so he says, for none of us live to ourselves and none of us die to ourselves. Verse 8, for whether we live, we live to the Lord. This is what we're talking about in this program is letting live Jesus, letting Jesus live through us, letting us live through Jesus. So we're living the, and remember, live, remember what the word live or life means, Zoe, it's the life of God. So we're not talking about just existing and going through our daily stuff. You know, we get out of bed and we go to work and we do this and that. We're not talking about that kind of living. We're talking about the living where no matter what you do, you're living Uh, life to the fullest, where you're content, you're happy, you're thrilled with life and you're being a blessing to other people's lives and you're letting your light so shine before men and they're seeing all the good things God's doing in your life and then they want to come to God because of you. And that's that's what we're talking about here is letting that kind of life. And it's a fun life, friends. I'm telling you, I'm living it. I I have firsthand experience and I'm going to keep even getting more experience because I I keep getting more understanding and more life. And so this is just going to get bigger and bigger. But I understand that it's about the bigger picture about others. Uh, For whether we live, we live to the Lord. And whether we die, we die to the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. So what are verses 7 and 8 doing? They're really pointing out the bigger picture to us. They're really pointing out that you need to be thinking about Jesus and about other people more than you do self. Play possum. <laughs> Amen. Come on. I, I dare any one of you. Come on. Come, come to one of my meetings and walk up to me. Brother Hutton, I got a word from the Lord for you. Okay, what is it? 
play possum. <laughs> yeah, I'd love it. I'd love it. Come on. I dare you. I double dog dare you. Come on. Come to my meetings. Keep an eye on our website, LarryHutton.org, and you can go to our itinerary and find out where we're going to be, if we're going to be in your area or if we're in an area where you can fly to and join us, man. Come join us because I don't care if it's a little tiny church. I preach at little tiny churches too, so you can come join us to those churches. Help them out. Praise God. But uh, we got to think about Jesus and we got to think about others. In fact, when I, th when I think about letting Jesus live through me, one of my favorite uh, passages in it is in Ephesians 4. So I want to share that with you because we don't have a lot more time here today. But Ephesians 4, if you'll go over there. Ephesians chapter 4, and let's go to verse 32, where, where God says, Now this is the Lord speaking to the church, so you and I in the New Testament under grace, Be ye. Be. you gotta, you got to do something. Grace isn't just sitting back, okay, I just receive all grace by faith. I don't have to do anything. Oh, yes, you have to do something. We're going to get into that in another program, not in this series, in another series that I'm going to be doing. But uh, Ephesians 4.32, be kind. Isn't that interesting that God is having to tell Christians, please be kind to one another. That shouldn't even be something if we're actually Christian. What does Christian mean? Christ-like. Aha, there you go. It's a novel thought, isn't it? Christ-like. I'm supposed to be like Jesus. Hmm, okay. And if I'm like Jesus, he wouldn't have to tell me to be kind one to another. The implication here is there are Christians in Ephesus, and of course this is written to the New Testament believer as well, that among us, and you know people that aren't, that aren't kind. I mean, come on, there's times when... I don't mean to be unkind, but I've come across as unkind. So all of us need to grow in this. I'm telling you, there's, there's times where, you know, I'm, I may be in, like a, I'm in a hurry and I start focusing on what I've got to get done because I have so little time to do it. And so I'm in a hurry and, and I, and I, come across a person and they say something to me and because of my time constraint and realizing I don't have time to stop and talk, I just say something back and it comes across as, I wasn't trying to be unkind, but it come across as curt, comes across as unkind. So guess what? Be kind one to another. So stop. What would Jesus do? WWJD, right? What would Jesus do? Be kind one to another. Be kind. He's telling us to be kind. And then he says, tender hearted. So is that being tender when I'm in such a hurry that I just blow you off and don't treat you as tender? Tender hearted. And then forgiving one another. What if you've done something wrong to me? What am I supposed to do? Forgive you. Forgive one another. And it says, I'm supposed to do this even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven me. Ooh, does that include everything? Yeah, baby, it includes all sin, doesn't it? All sin. Whew, my goodness. I like this. He said, he said, be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. So in other words, I'm supposed to forgive you and be kind to you and tenderhearted you the same way God is to me. Aren't you glad God isn't... Uh, uh, the opposite of these things, not kind to you and not tenderhearted you and not forgiving you based on all the things you have done. I'm telling you, I am. Bless God, if we got what we deserved, we wouldn't have mercy and grace flowing in our lives, huh? But he said, be kind, tenderhearted, forgiving. So we're supposed to forgive. How does God forgive? A hundred percent of the time, no matter how many times we've missed it. So think about that when others are treating you bad. And then Luke chapter 17, 3 and 4, Take heed to yourselves. If your brother trespass against you, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again, saying, I repent, forgive him. Oh, I love that. Matthew uh, 18, 21 through 22, Peter asked Jesus, how often do we forgive our brother that when they keep missing it? Jesus said, 70 times seven. <laughs> 400, 490 times. Why? We're dead. Play possum. 790 times. Yeah, that means if that guy does that to you, your friend or your brother or your sister, somebody does it to you one time, repents, later come, later on does the same thing two hours later and two hours later does the same thing and repents and you forgive him and, and an hour later does the same thing the fourth time and you he repents, you forgive him and, and two hours later the fifth time he does it. And it 
Come on. That's only five times. What if he did it 490 times? That would be, how many times a minute would he be doing it? <laughs> I haven't even done the math there, but 490 times in a day and you're supposed to forgive him. Yeah, that is what it means to die to self. And that, my friends, is what it's talking about, letting Jesus live through us. Play dead, play possum. Realize, man, you know, my life, I'm dead. My life is hid, so I'm going to let people see God. I'm going to let people see Jesus. Even when I'm treated bad, when I'm done wrong, when I'm sinned against, when it hurts, I'm going to let them see Jesus. Let my light so shine before men. See, that's letting Jesus live through you. That they see your good works. They see all the things God's doing in your life. He's working in your life. And then they want to glorify your Father because of you and because of me. That is letting Jesus live through us. And that is when you live life to the fullest, my friend. Man, I hope you've enjoyed this. Well, we're going to pick up another, another subject next week, but I know this is going to be a blessing to those of you who get a hold of it. Share it. Make sure you share it on, on social media and other places. Share these messages with other people. And of course, you can always order them through our ministry as well. But uh, thank you for joining us. And thank you for those of you that we've just noticed some new partners are signing up. That means you're being unselfish dying to self, you're deciding, you know what, I'm hearing this, it's helping me. I want to put some money into this to help other people because people paid for me to hear it. And so be a, become a partner and we'll be partner with you as well. Thank you. Thank you partners for, the, for your support and thank you for all of you for loving the word and loving Jesus. We love you and we call you blessed and, and want you to have a wonderful Jesus filled day. See you next program. God intends for believers to be able to apply His Word to their daily lives and get good results, living the joyful, loving, and abundant life that Jesus has provided for us. Believers are supposed to understand the Bible and be able to enjoy the blessings of heaven while we are here on the earth. But many believers, at the beginning of their new life in Jesus, did not learn the most basic foundational truths of the Bible that will carry them over all of the traps and pitfalls and on into victorious, limitless life in Christ. In this new book, Dr. Hutton addresses all the issues that every Christian must come to know, understand, and establish as true in order to lead a limitless life in Jesus. To order your copy of Limitless Life with Jesus, go to larryhutton.org or call 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD.